broadcasting from the Dum Drum Town Center. This is Dublin South FM. Good afternoon and welcome to Business Eye on Dublin South FM. Uh, we've got some a couple of really wonderful guests here and, uh, of course, my pal Joe is sitting next to me. Hi, Joe. Hello, Simon. How are you? I'm good. It's been a busy week and uh, I hope, uh, yeah, the storm seems to have passed by. I hope our listeners have, uh, haven't suffered too much. But um, anyway, we're moving into the weekend, which is great. Better safe than sorry, I have to say. Better yep. safe than sorry Absolutely. indeed. But yes, there was a bit of a... You know, yellow alert. Um, we decided to pull an event, pull an event in Galway, uh, weather-wise. And looking out there now, there's blue sky. But are we in the eye of the storm? That's what I want to ask. Uh, I think it feels calm in here. I think calm, it feels calm there. <laughs> well, let's rustle it up. Who have we got today? Yeah, so we've got two great guests who I met. Both of you met a couple of months ago, and we had really interesting chats. And I was really, um, you know, enthusiastic and and sort of taken back by your energy and and, and your attitudes towards nurturing others. So, uh, first of all, we have uh, uh, Sarah. Uh, sorry, Sarah Daly. Sarah yes. Daly, and uh, you run a business called Grow Forth. Correct. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So it's great to great to have you here. Lovely to be here. Thank it's, you for bringing, you. asking me. And then Ken Gormley, uh, you're the Chief Estates Officer for the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. That's correct, Simon. And thanks very much for the invite. It's great to be here with you guys today. Yeah, it's great to have it's you. It's very yeah. posh, isn't it? That title. That's, isn't it? That's it's a, a, that's a title that makes it all very, very posh. <laughs> well, well, thank, thanks very much, Simon. It doesn't feel so posh. Really. I'm, I'm, re I'm really a builder. That's all I am. You know? <laughs> Building relationships. And yeah. that's what it's about, isn't it? It's, it's, we all build relationships. Um, connecting with people and helping people. It, if it is, you know, bringing people through to college or helping people then with with finances or getting direction on the business. Everything really boils down to relationships at the end of the day. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. It is. You have to be able to be comfortable with working whoever you're working with, whether it's externally or internally. Um, and that's a firm belief because I, I don't feel like I'm an outsourced anything. Yeah. I feel like that I'm actually partnering with a business yeah. and working with them through all the challenges they're working through. Yeah, and that, that, That's what I noticed when we when we had a really wonderful chat a couple of months ago is that, you know, you do all the financial stuff and the bookkeeping stuff and the business support stuff. But it seemed to me that you're almost not just a partner with your clients, but almost a, a, a mental support to your clients, which which is invaluable, you know. Yeah, I, I find a lot of the clients that have been coming to me have huge energy, great belief in their business, but they just that need that motivation and support to get there and believe that, yes, you can actually double or triple your business if you want, but is that really what you want? And I think it really boils down to people's goals for the business, mm -hmm. but for themselves as well. Yeah, it, it's yeah. interesting, Sarah, because, you know, I've spoken to people in the past who are CEOs of companies and the reason why they get mentors or advisors is because they are at a high position, but are still not quite sure and struggle with A, B and C in developing the business where you're coming in more like to help them as a financial director or financial helping them in the financial lens. Is there, and it's one of the biggest issues, I think, when we grow up and you mentioned money and fear and we can go back right to, or, you know, when we were children and, oh, how much is that? Oh, why are you asking me that? And th these things. So when these people get into these careers, is it you kind of find, oh, my God, I have to kind of, this person is running such a great business, but they still don't, they're still not watching the numbers. There is a sense, there is a piece of that. Yes, there is. Yeah. But there is also a fear of, should I? Or shouldn't I expand? Can I or can't I expand? Or sometimes people actually, you know, uh, they actually don't know what the figures mean. So mm. it's like you need to go out and self-educate yourself or go on a course. And there's plenty of them out there. But for me, it's more of what is it that you want or where is it you want to bring your business to? And they get sidelined at times. They go, well, I've got there. But deep down, they're like, there's a lot more that we can do. Yeah, it's 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 interesting having both of you here as mm -hmm. well because Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, you're really getting these people at a very young age. 
Yeah, ab- absolutely, same, and and, and it's uh, you know, uh, sorry, Joe, it, it's you're quite right. Like it, what gets me out of bed in the morning is the opportunity to support these young people. Yeah, yeah. and and some of the older people as well. We've obviously uh, post grads as well, but uh, being able to the, the college's uh, ethos is to educate, nurture, and discover for the benefit of human health. And for, for me, the nurture piece is, is, is massive within that. And it's what gets me out of the bed in the morning. It's just facilities, estates management. It's primarily about helping people. Yeah. And, you know, when you can actually help your core business, which is our students, is, is very satisfying. And being able to pass that element of experience, because uh, I know I only look about 21, but I'm, I'm actually an awful lot older than that. But, and uh, to be able to pass on that opportunity of the mistakes that you've made in the past onto uh, some of our students is just fantastic you know it's a real benefit the other thing I picked up well, you, you, you kind of took me into the refectory at the back of the Royal College which I'd never been to before but what really struck me was that you were so proud to show me it you know and then you were chatting to some of the students and I got this strong sense of enthusiasm which I, I remember back as a student it's a daunting time you know and um, you know I think a lot of these students it's a scary time. So when they feel that enthusiasm from key people like you, it's so important. I, I, it may, I, maybe not at the time, but in the future, they'll remember it. I, I think you're quite right, Simon. Uh, it, it's something that the senior people in the college talk talk a lot about when our alumni come back to the college. They, they love to meet the portering team. They love to meet the academics that were, were part of the, uh, of the of the faculty. They love to meet the, the, the central services guys, which, which I'm part of. And what they all say is, it's how you made me feel. And I think that's really important in any business. We can deliver world-class education, which we do every day of the week. However, do we really know how our students are feeling every day? We'd like to think we do. But when they come back and tell us that uh, you made me feel great, I remember the day we played the rugby or we went on the trip to, you know, uh, when, when the French rugby team came over and we went on the, on the trip out to see the, the, the uh, Six Nations game and we had a great day's fun. They don't tend to come back so much and talk about, you know, how their lecture went in relation yeah, to... Yeah, it's the memory. Correct, yeah, abs- yeah, absolutely, Joe, yeah. It's well, the feelings. What, what, it's the feelings. It's all about the feelings, yeah. Like, how big is the college? Like, how many students go through on a, on a yearly basis? How, like, th- th- so we, 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 have, we have five schools, uh, you know, the medical school being the biggest, School of Physiotherapy, uh, Pharmacy, or Institute of Leadership. Uh, we have a graduate entry medicine program as well. I think we have about 3,000 students uh, across the across all the... Uh, Across all the the schools, so we've a we've a large we've a large student base, but we are a non for profit, uh, relatively small uh, institution in the centre of Dublin, the only medical school in Ireland that pr- primarily delivers a, 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 a medical or a life sciences ed- education. So uh, th- that'd be roughly the the, the, the size, Joe. You know, uh, a, a vast. Uh, demographic of students come from all over the world you know which is great we love that I think it's a it, it's great to have that uh, diversity within the college we're very proud of that what's the history of the, the college well it's it, it's very old it goes back to the 1700s mm. and you know I'm sure you, you you you're aware of the blood and bandages where you have the back in the day the barber believe it or not was the guy that could maybe carry out some of the uh, some of the yeah absolutely yeah, some of the yeah. some of the operations uh, I don't know what Remove kind of quality yeah ex- exactly and, and, and we've grown in Steve Stevens Green uh, o- o- over the years to where we've now uh, a world class campus, world class med- medical quarter in the centre of Dublin. Recently opened our ten thousand square meter twenty six York Street, which is which is state of the art building. So the so the history is rich, Joe. You don't have enough time to to give mm. you, but we've had some some real pioneers. Uh, you know, some fantastic women that's come through the college, and we've had a we've had a program recently, uh, our, our Women on Walls campaign. I don't know if you had a chance to get into the city to see that. So again, the recognition of uh, the, the all the different elements that made the college so rich and so proud over the last 270 odd years or whatever it is now mm. maybe I've got my maths wrong there but we're, we've been in Stevens Green a long time what and really <laughs> sorry what really struck me was that you were showing me around the I didn't realise effectively it's a medical district within the centre of Dublin yeah. and, and there's a project right now about taking some of the old sort of the old blocking blocking fences and gates and making it more of a communal area and making yeah. it into a true collaborative district which absolutely is really we've just we've, we've just finished that uh, Simon actually so yeah. it's, very, it's very, very timely it, 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 we we uh, we opened ourselves up to, to, to York Street and uh, you know we have multi-access uh, 
into the into the York Street entrance now, which is reflective of what we've done in 26 across the road. So we're trying to mirror one building up. If, if only we could uh, pedestrianise York Street, but uh, that, that yeah. might be a step too far for us. We'd need DCC to support us there, but, you know, it'd be great. Stranger you know? things have happened. Yeah, yeah, Stranger yeah, things yeah. have happened. In it. <clears throat> but that's it as well. You know, there's a lot of innovation. You know, all the colleges and all the businesses that, that we have all around the country, like for the size of the population, you know, Innovation, innovate. It's it's such a great place. Like I tell people around the world that you know we're we're going into the we're the tech capital of Europe. We mm, really yeah. are. Mm-hmm. And then there's all the like with the College of Surgeons. It's always been that sort of hidden gem in the back. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. always talked about Trinity and UCD, yeah. and, but the College of Surgeons is it's sort of just peeking over the fence, going, yeah. Yeah. Do you know, we're doing a lot here, but you know, yeah. we're we're under the radar. And maybe it's levelled at us sometimes that we don't. Maybe we hide our. Our, our, our great wins under a bushel but you know there, maybe there's an element of uh, you know carrying yourself with it with a bit of dignity around that as well but the world class research that goes on like for, for me to be part to be working in the Royal College of Swords sometimes I have to pinch myself really because the opportunity to work with uh, really gifted individuals in the area of teaching in the area of research is just to, to, to be helping people to develop the next cure for whatever you know crippling disease is in the planet is just it, it's, it's incredible yeah. yeah it really is it's, it's I'm watching a program at the moment on Netflix uh, Bill Gates I don't know if you've watched it the, the brain of Bill Gates and some of the stuff that he's doing he's trying to you know eradicate uh, polio around the world and then it was you know it was um, diarrhea in African countries and some of the stuff that he's pushing and the yeah. money that he's pumping into it and these are all just ideas that suddenly you know grow mm. and which yourself sir as well can you you spoke about you know what's happening and you're working with great people and you have to pinch yourself on a daily basis and with yourself as well I'm sure you work with people and you're working with large companies out there and you can you know these guys don't really not realize how awesome they can be because they're self-doubting or they yeah. haven't stepped up to that level. Do you get that a lot yourself? There's more than you relies like that. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing because you don't want them to have a massive ego. Mm. They, and a lot of these guys are still focused on growing the business or is there another channel? And it's great to see that because they're they're at the stage where they're working on the business and they're loving it. They're not into the frills or anything like that. They're just going, what's the next project? And it's great energy, and but yes, you have to control them going, you can't do, start the project right now. You'll just have to wait three or four months, but at least you know where you're, they're going. How I'm interested. So when you're dealing with a client, right, and they start opening up to you about inner fears and fear of failure, how do you, because you're starting to move into the psychotherapy stuff. How yes. would you handle that as a mentor, as a leadership developer? That's a good question and a hard question at the same time, because <laughs> a lot of people tell me, I suppose sometimes I feel like it's common sense, but it's not. And I suppose because I've grown up in a in a self-employed family business all my life, I just, I suppose it's anything we discuss is confidential. And I always tell, tell them that. And if anyone ever comes to my office, you'll realise that there's a load of box of tissues around for a reason. You're bo- better off letting it out than let, keeping it in. And yes, people do tell me a lot of stuff and a lot of personal stuff. Mm. But if I can't help them, I will get them in contact with someone who can get them over that stage it's, it's, it's interesting have you then I'm sure we all have to when you're growing you meet someone and they want to expand that business that you so say look this business has legs but unfortunately you have hit your wall of where you can take it. Yes. You know, we all talk about the ego and we talk about the delegation and great companies work by delegating people that are stronger. Correct. Will you say to them, says, you have got it to where it is. Now it's time to get people in that can take this to the next level. I have. I have done that for several companies yeah. and I've had both reactions. One reaction where I actually exited the business pretty rapidly because it wasn't going to go anywhere. Whereas the other ones we sat down and we started going, okay, where can we source that person? Yeah. And and it's interesting. Majority of them would say, you're right, but I just don't know how to find that person. And then you get, you get into a conversation because of the networking I do, I'm exposed to so many different people. I can go out there and ask people, can you refer me to somebody else? I need to talk to them. It's interesting because what's happening at the moment, because we're up at you know full employment, like in, in it's, it's now trying to find those people as well. But look, Look, what we'll do is we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after the ads. Thank you. 
your community radio for South Dublin. This is Dublin South FM. You're listening to Joe Dalton on Dublin South FM. Community radio with a global audience. Welcome back. Can we back? Yeah. Yeah. We back, Simon? Right? I think we are, yeah. So, Simon, tell us, we were doing uh, a little, we had, we were co-facilitating uh, uh, on Monday, wasn't it? We were, yeah. So, I, I, I have a gig at uh, an organization called IES Abroad, which uh, brings American uh, undergraduates over to various places around the world, but they have a place in Rathmines in Dublin. So, I run a program called Hearts and Mind of the Negotiator, and I brought you in as a as the guest for this week's subject was the negotiating style, uh, how you, different negotiating styles. So you were talking about using values and looking at your emotion, emotional background and motivational stuff. I, I think it was great, wasn't it? It was. It, I was impressed uh, with the students because they were coming up with questions that even made me kind of ponder on. You yeah, know, and that's the beauty yeah. of it. And and isn't that what life is about? Yeah. It's it's about discovery. It's about asking those questions. If you're stuck ask yourself the questions and those questions then will give you the answers yeah in the college do you get a lot of people you know asking those questions that even stump yourself or even in 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 the business as well did you kind of go yeah that's that's and that's where discovery is isn't well it? it's it's yeah. you know i said right at the outset educate nurture and discover for, for the benefit of human health. So discovery is, is everything in, in the sciences and the research. And I was just saying when I, when I come in to Simon and we didn't get finished in the conversation, there was a fantastic little video clip on, uh, on LinkedIn this morning about, uh, I think he was a Colombian chap weightlifter. And, you know, 2004, how he finished it right up until he won the gold medal uh, last year in, uh, or the last Olympic Games. And it was, I guess the moral of the story was the failure helped him to go again and what did he discover about himself going through that journey must have been huge so yes you're right we, we, we always challenge ourselves around what we could discover more how we can rebound from failure in my job the amount of mistakes that we make on a daily basis is quite incredible but without those, I believe we're not testing ourselves. We don't yeah. really challenge ourselves. How many you admit to? Yeah, well, <laughs> we'd like to think we'd admit to them all. As long as we don't injure anybody and and put and and, and, and bankrupt the the, the organisation, I think you can recover from most things. It's, it's like a, a friend of mine. Of, he's a, a video photographer. Paul Michel has done some great work for the college. Um, has gone around sh- um, people that you know there's conditions or diseases that we're, we're not aware of in the country and he's done documentaries for the college yeah. and I've seen some of the work and then it's relaying back to what the college has to offer and it is quite amazing actually it's like discovery is, as, as I said you know discovery is key it's, it's, it's in our mission statement and the, the, the vision of the college is, is all about being able to find part of it uh, is to be able to find the next generation of cures for for, for these but, debilitating but, but diseases, that you, you mentioned that's in your in your mission statement. And d- 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 is there somewhere on the wall going, okay, let's cure this. Let's see if we can cure A, B, and C. Yeah. Or is it just, do you know, d- d- like is there a a strategy or to get these people thinking t- to solve this? A- a- absolutely, and our and our senior management team have recently launched the the new five year strategy, and I think there's fifty three pillars to the to the strategy, and it's everybody's very focused and, and know exactly what they're doing. Unfortunately, I couldn't name them all for you, Joe, because I'm not on the academic side. I'd be happy to bore you to death about what we're doing in in, yeah, in facility. Yeah. <laughs> <them, but laughs> I don't even ask yeah, you for them. Yeah, or, no. yeah, it's a bit big know. number, but. Yes, that we we have we have many of our large research programs on all the notice boards around the college. Absolutely, to remind people. Sarah, <laughs> Ken's talking about strategy there. Yeah. Do you have not a fifty-two point you know, plan? But well, do you? Not. Yes, yes. Uh, open the door, put the kettle on. <laughs> that's why every day. Um, do you have a sort of a strategy or questions that you ask people to do that? Let's call it fact finding to see where they are in their business and where their business is. Yeah, it's again, it's when you meet someone, you have a conversation and the more they talk, the more information you're getting, the more questions. So there's no list of one particular set of questions because every single person you meet is different. Mm-hmm. And the more information they come out, you realise different. They may not see it, but you'll see different factors that is actually affecting their business with them talking but by the time they finish talking they're they, often they answer their questions yeah yeah and 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 just is there a industry you specialize in 
or is it a it's a broad but if I if I look at it I have a lot of tech firms both okay. Irish and international um, a lot of medical devices and then you've got every other type of business in there as, in, in the mix it just it's just the way it evolved because it's all referrals 90% of my business is referrals or someone I met in networking and referred business it's a weird way you know I always say that when we start off a business the first two years if you're doing this mm-hmm. and you'll either have partners that will disappear but you will then evolve into what the business is after three years I agree and in in that as well you then fall into that niche like I could look at all the people that I've helped over the years but I've now looked what I've, the work I've been in over the last year and a half and I'm now help consultants and advisors that's my niche now and yes. without me even realizing it I sort of meandered into that and I'm kind of comfortable with it. I think that happens to everybody. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah. just coming back to when you're talking about failures, that's the one thing that when you start networking, you meet a lot of people and you hear their failures. Mm. You have to be open to actually discuss it with them. What did you learn from it? So I don't make that mistake myself. That's an interesting point. So a lot of the, the equity, private equity and venture capitalists tend to swoop on businesses around when the businesses are 18 to 24 months old because a lot of the hard work has done, been done by the business founders. They've got the, they built the network. They've kind of proven their model. But at that, age, that, that sort of two year stage, they, they tend to start falling out or losing interest. So that's when they swoop, right? When yes. they can get optimal value. So how do you, how do you, when you're dealing with clients who are that sort of tender period, one to three years, how do you per- persuade them to keep going or if they need to pivot or how do you persuade them to become more self-aware about where they're at? Because where they're that's a really sensitive time, two years. Yes, it is. And I have two, two three clients at that stage at the moment. Yeah. And one of them, I told them, we brought someone in and I told them, you need to go on a week's holiday. <laughs> You just have to, and you're not allowed to take the mobile or the laptop. You need time out because they're burnt out. It's, it's, and, and I've been reading a lot of reports about, you know, great creative people coming out of college, going into multinationals and, but they're, they're, they're expected to do so much and they're expected to work long hours. By the time 18 months come around, they're so burnt out. They don't have creativity any yeah, longer. Yeah. So it's the same thing is like, even I got burnt out with my own business because I worked 12 hours a day, seven days a week yeah. and I needed to step back, but Christmas is my time to step back. Mm. Then I realised I can't do this on my own anymore. I need to hire staff. So Mm. for me, it's a lot of these people. It's you've brought your business to a certain stage. Where do you want to take it from here? You've got a few options. Are you willing to sell it and be bought out? Or Mm. do you want to keep hold of it and, you know, bring in the right people at the right senior management? And it's a conversation. It's a difficult conversation because Mm. a lot of people, this is their baby. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is this is my life. But but the venture capitalists. They they don't care about that. Their job is their job is to swoop so at that vulnerable point. Yes, but that vulnerable point. It's interesting because most companies will fail within the first two years, and two of the major factors are one, they don't realise the amount of money that they need yeah. to invest in the company. Yes, and the second one is they don't realise the amount of time it takes to get the first selection of sales to yep. drive the business forward on two it. or three years. Two, it's it's tr- the three year three gap years, yeah, on yeah, it, and yeah, yeah. if you can get it's over that, also. And I have to say that because of my experience is they don't watch the cash flow. They get the funds in of one, two, three million and they're like, brilliant, I can do this, this and this. I'm like, no, no, no. This cash flow has to last. Yeah, yeah. The three million has to last uh, yeah, two it's years. Spend wisely is one of the things that I learned from the companies in the past uh, that I've worked, that I've, that I've lost money in as well, which you know, spend wisely. Yeah, and very it's, much so, yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's an, and one of the thing about tech companies as well, with a lot of the tech companies, you know, they, they have this great idea. It's brilliant. But they, they're, they, there's this mental block where it needs to be perfect. And if yes. you wait for something to be perfect, you'll never have anything. Mm. We wouldn't be no. here today if it was You'd perfect. You'd be constantly perfecting it. Yeah. You and and you, you'll say to them, how's that? Grand, I just need to add this onto it. Okay, well, if you spoke to the market, yeah, yeah, I have, but I'm, we're changing the design here, the colour, or we're adding this button, or we're this medical device. And you go, get it out there. And then you're three years later, you say, how's it going? Oh, we're going under. Why? Oh, because we didn't sales. But they had this beautiful thing. And that's the two years where you, they, they yeah. need that big yeah. cash injection on it. Absolutely. 
Ken, ju- just just turning back to you, um, we had a chat before about the different programs that the the college has around um, leadership development and and internal mentoring and yeah. stuff like that. You know, I'm always I'm I'm really fascinated personally about whether leaders are born or whether they can be taught or whether they mm. have, they can only pick this up through life's experiences or whether there's a bit of luck. But tell us a little bit about what happens within the college. Sure, yeah, and you know, not being the oracle on whether it can be taught or it's something you you pick up, you know. I, Rightly or wrongly, I, I put a lot of uh, credibility around being involved in sport because I don't think there's an awful lot of difference between the boardroom and the dressing room. Mm-hmm. Everybody's trying to achieve the same thing. It's a team working together, trying to win a game of rugby or a game of football or a game of GEA or trying to deliver the next best product and get the best bang for buck for your shareholders. You know, So it's, it's an output-driven uh, dr- agenda. But in the, in the college... Uh, we have some some great programs, and, and and one that I'm very passionate about, and very fortunate to be involved in is is uh, being involved as as the non academic side of the house, b- having the opportunity to mentor our great students. Mm. And you know, last year was my was it was the first time I got involved, and I had four fantastic students. And the citizenship the citizenship award mm. is the easy for me to say is the output uh, for, for our students. It, it helps enhance and augment their uh, CVs, which is fantastic. It's something that's. Uh, handed out by the president of Ireland at the, yeah. at the end and it fills our students with great pride and uh, you then get the opportunity in those interactions with the students to talk about many different things mm. not just about the citizenship award and it can be uh, about where, where would I get good sushi you know yeah. could, could you tell me where I could get my uh, a flat tyre on my bicycle do you know anywhere local that I could you know especially from our from our overseas students so to be able to it's back to the thing I've been helping to be able to help is just fantastic you I know, was right? going to say that I've, you know I you know I've spent like Joe 25 years in business and working with executives and etc cetera, etc cetera, but I'm doing this job now of teaching students at this American college and Friday evening 5 o'clock is their weekly deadline to submit their assignments right to them, it's a big deal. To me, it feels even bigger because yeah. it's kind of a pressure. I look forward to going and open that email. Hopefully, they're all again there this week, but they've been on time each week. It's a wonderful thing to have that and to be part of, I've never done it before, developing young people's yeah. direction. You know, it's a precious thing. No, it, it, it absolutely is, Simon. And, and and I still get a sense of nausea when, when, when the exam season comes around for our students and you, you, you see them before they're going into their... To, to their exams and some of these can be life changing moments for them because it's it's mm-hmm. it's 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 imperative for them on the academic side that that they, uh, they they get through their academic studies and I see them going into the rooms and it reminds me when I was a young person yeah. I didn't have near as much skin in the game as our students have doing a junior cert or a leaving cert uh, for example but uh, the nausea I felt at the time going through those exams I don't know how, how they're just fantastic the way they can hold themselves together mm-hmm. and the composure they show during these periods is unbelievable really you know. Mm-hmm. You're, you're talking there, Simon, about, you know, is it knowledge, wisdom, experience? Yeah. Um, the question, you know, would you let a born surgeon or a trained surgeon operate on you? And that, that, that's, the, you know, you know the, quite the answer there. Yeah. Knowledge, experience, you know, we all learn, we, we, we find interest in something, something that is passionate to us, and there is the journey that we take in our own careers. Mm. And in that, we learn and then wisdom comes as we get older, wiser, and we get a bit more mellow as well. We understand mm-hmm. life a lot better as we get older, where these people are coming through, if they're going to be, in, you know, get into, you know, finances or get into, into surgery or whatever it may be, that's the path they chose. And the only way you really gain knowledge on that is wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Like, you know, but don't ask me to... Going through it. It's actually going, going through it. it. Yeah. Going through absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Don't ask me to... But I think with, with you, it's, it's no matter, in a college, it's like a second family because you're, it's, it's like going to work. It's your, it's your second family because you're with them most of the day and you're relying on them to support you on where, wherever it is. No, you're quite right, Sarah. I, you know, we had a valedictorian speech, I think it was this year, and where the young lady said it takes a village to raise a child mm. yes. you know a college is exactly the same it takes mm. the whole college community community to help each individual student yeah, yeah. and so at the college you have a I know you you don't know too much about it but there's a leadership institute oh, down there in Sandyford yeah. which, yeah. which I, I hadn't even thought about it I just assumed that medical students learn medical stuff but of course they're leaders they're, yeah. they're all leaders so the, so the institute of leadership yeah Absolutely. you're quite right Simon. the institute of leadership is another one of the schools yeah, yeah. Uh, within, within the college structure and 
and uh, it, primarily, and I, I hope I'm not wrong here, it, it's it's mostly I think uh, postgraduate students. So students yeah. that are out there in the in the not always in the medical profession, but they come back and and they learn that other bit about you know managing people, process technology, all that yeah, good stuff yeah. that maybe you don't pick up in the in the in the medical degrees. Maybe previously, twenty years ago, you definitely wouldn't have. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. Um, I want to when, when we come back, I'm going to just ask us a bit about Brexit as well because it is something that's quite on. You know, we are all talking about it, but you know, I want to see what your opinions are. On that note, we'll chat back in a minute. Ninety three point nine Dublin South FM. You're listening to Joe Dalton on Dublin South FM Community Radio with a global audience. Welcome back. Uh, so Joe, during the break, in his wisdom, wanted us to start talking about Brexit. So, uh, Joe. Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. Where are we today? We're all running scared, hiding in the hay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Covered it there, Joe. <laughs> he summed it up nicely, didn't yeah. he? So, over, so with that, what's your opinion, Sarah? My opinion? Especially for tech companies. That's... For any company, to be quite honest yeah. with you. Uh, looking at the businesses I deal with, a lot of them have either resource their suppliers out of England and, and to Europe. Some of them actually have opened companies in the UK as a precaution because most of their business might be in the UK. Um, tech companies, a lot of them that I've been working with, it's, it's their people. It's actually their people based in different locations throughout Europe and Britain. So where do they stand? So it, there's, I think there's a lot of wait and see at the moment. Um, I, I'm personally going, we'll just wait and see because I don't know where this is going. It's, it's interesting because um, if you jump on LinkedIn and, and there's uh, Party Daily uh, wrote a, a great article um, on Flanders about moving, you know, all the, Flanders basically are setting up a hub to deal with everything that doesn't want to go, it will not go through. And even he, he has a, a show actually here as well, and he's interviewing the um, the, the Belgium ambassador uh, next week. But at th- that, and he wrote a great another great article about why Britain can't leave the EU as well. I think you read that as well, did yeah. you? Yeah. And and it's from 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 the people that I'm speaking to, we're all kind of going, oh yeah, yeah, but. People don't really get it. Do you know, this isn't just, this wasn't just a tick yes, no on the ballot paper. Do you know, all the strings and all the pulleys and everything else that goes in is going to, I, do you know, can't, I don't think it'll cause a recession. My other, my other opinion is World War II happened. And after World War II, we all kind of got on with us. You know, 50, 50 odd years later, everything was thriving. What will happen with this? It'll fall. We'll get on with it. And something will be worked out. But it's the political end that, you know, it's, there's an awakening, a shock in the political end, which I think will, will affect the parties for a long, long time. I think it's really important that, that it's interesting that... Y- the UK as a as a concept is really fragile. I mean, Scotland, the referendum, what's happening in Northern Ireland, there's a huge fragility there. And the last thing the UK wanted as an entity was a referendum to further divide it. That's the first thing. And you can see that in the eyes of the ruling classes. They're really, I think for the first time really in my lifetime, they can see, wow, you know, we've done something here. We didn't know what we were creating here. It was a silly move. To- it was a crazy move. Like what this, what's this shown is three and a half years later, all this due diligence that's been happening should have happened before the vote. Then the second thing then, in terms of Ireland, Ireland compared to 10 years ago with the, with the recession has had 10 years more growth, has had 10 years more investment, 10 years more of the EU supporting it. So you put all that together. I think Ireland, okay, there's going to be downsides with, with, with Brexit. But, but Ireland's new industries in, will grow from it. Ireland is in a much stronger position that the UK appreciates. Ken, I know you can't talk on behalf of the college here, but what do you feel about all this? Yeah, well, the personal opinion on it, Simon, and, you, and you're, I think you're touching on something there that I, that I feel passionate about. What, whatever about Brexit and, you know, the political fallout and all the things that will happen and your analogy towards World War Two, Joe, abs- absolutely. But the one thing nobody's talking about is the positive impact. If everything goes the right way. So everybody's talking about the doom and gloom scenario that, you know, medicines may or may not be able to get across the border and, you know, people may not be able to travel across a hard border and, and, and all these kind of things. But what about which I, I firmly believe will happen because they're seeing people, big business, seeing people uh, in, in, in across Europe that'll make this come out the right side for us all. 
What happens if that happens? Where are we ready for the bounce in the economies to go the right way? Everybody's talking down, going into recessions. What happens in Ireland in particular? We're in full employment. We have no housing. Well, not, not that we have no housing, but we're challenged in housing the, the people that we have. What do we do if it bounces the wrong way or the right way for us? I love that optimistic way of looking at it. And I can say here and now on the 15th of October, the company, that I, one of the entities I work for, Brand Finance, we're launching our nation brand index at the Notre Dame University. And we've just got the facts and figures in. And the value of Ireland, the Irish, the country of Ireland, the nation brand has gone up over, over, I won't give the exact number, over 100% since the referendum. That blew me away. I thought it was about 50%, but the numbers have come through. So that's the monetary value of Ireland but, as a brand. But over look, 100%. looking at the positive, it's, it's like reading something there. I think David McWilliams was saying or someone, it was it was 70% of our exports or something were going to the UK and now it's something like 11. But what's, what, has, what this has done for Ireland is it has made us not rely on one country yeah. and yes. – organizations manufacturing have all gone now it's time for me now to pull up my socks and go further afield and in that there is a bigger growth as well yeah in adversity growth happens and i know it's terrible to say it but this has been an adversity moment for the republic and and you know in my lifetime i you know i i grew up in britain i'm now an irish citizen i've lived here for 10 years in australia for 10 years and but in this is the first time in my lifetime that i look at the Look at UK and look at Ireland, and I can't see the UK being any stronger than Ireland in this from an actual and perception perspective. That's huge. That's th a huge th moment in history. I think you're right, Simon. And, and the analogy that I put around it, you touched on the, the 10 years of recession and the, the long road up the hard hill that we all had to, to, to endure. I had to go to, I worked in Scotland for three years because there was no work in Ireland and learned greatly out of that. And it, it's nearly like when you go to the gym, we're really match fit. We've had 10 years of being match fit. Exactly. We can stand up on our exactly. own we're strong now yep. and I think we, we, we really show the rest of the world what a great country we are really I, nice you, you nailed it there <laughs> and here is one of our biggest strengths as a small nation we have travelled yes and you know I always believed that anybody should go away and work abroad at least for a year because you come back a wiser we as a nation only have four and a half million people here and the majority of them in adult life have traveled and have come back with with wisdom ireland is a nation of networkers so and sarah you were talking about that, about that before networking is really important to what you do and where you want to go and the direction it's, of your business sometimes i feel like it's the backbone of my business because yes i i'm really good at what i do but there's certain aspects i i could not touch and I would not touch. So I always, the, the networks I go to help me meet more people with the skill set that I need for my clients. So there's an amount of people that I've used to help my clients to, to get to the next level. For example, anyone in PR, I've had a few clients. I can only go so far. I, I know nothing about marketing. We source someone. Off you go. You know, and that's the way it works. And, and I've one client who literally tripled her business because of this. But I couldn't do that for her. So you have to understand where where you draw your line and what your keep, your skill set is, and, and and let someone else take over from it, where it needs to it's, be. It's hysterical, you know. We just it's on our brand the brand finance website. But at this event on the fifteenth, we've got amazing speakers. We've got Minister uh, Michael Darcy, the Minister of State for Finance. We've got Martin Nocton, the founder of Glen Dimplex. John Concannon, who's been appointed by the Taoiseach to represent Brand Island. And, and that, that was easy for me because I used my networks here. There was a particular guy, Barry Dowd, who I need to say thanks to, a, an ex-IDA guy. But the, the people in London are thinking, how the hell did you pull that off? We could never get a minister in the UK. And it's because I've worked my networks here. And once you work your networks and you're authentic and you're honest and people like you and you're likable and they can see this is something to support, it's a lot easier here than most places. That's on in the morning, isn't it? That's yeah, on the morning, yeah. Yeah, because I'm running my event on that same day as well, <laughs> <laughs> from 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it's yeah. interesting what you say there and, and, and you guys referring it to there as, as networks, and you're quite right to refer to it as, as a network. I call them me mentors. I know we're back to the old uh, mm. gnarly subject of, of mentors, and I just I think it's fantastic. But, you know, I have a, I have a number of those mentors that I've been able to pull on from when I was an apprentice, and I can still speak to those people, and then they can put me in touch. So any time I reach out for some help, 
You touched on marketing there, Sarah. There's many other things that I'm not an expert in, that's for sure. And to be able to reach out to those mentors and even coming today and meeting great people today is another number of people you can add to the to the email inbox list that you can send an email to which is think networking mentoring it's for me it's all the same and the one bit of advice to the young people that i try to give starting your own business going through college whatever it is going out at night for a few beers is have somebody you can pick up the phone to to lean on for a bit of advice yeah i don't i I don't i don't just see it as networking and i'm developing this in my head but for me it's about having people around me that help me substantiate and fulfill my own direction. Yeah, it's the right know? people. It so is. We, we fulfill can, your direction. Yeah. You know, I always say you can, it's how you address it. It's, it's like online, which we're talking about marketing. You mm. know, you, let's look at LinkedIn. You, if you use LinkedIn as you're walking into a room in a hotel where there's a network and have that mental attitude when you're networking on LinkedIn or when you're going to a networking meeting, it's, you know, you'll see at some meetings you're talking to someone and yes. that person is not making eye contact with you because they're waiting to get to the next person. person. Slow down. Life is where you are. Listen person. to people. Make mm. eye contact with people. Mm. They mightn't be your client. Take away the label, take away the, the yes. accountant, take away the painter, take away the surgeon, the consultant, and speak to that person as a human, human. to human. That's, and that's how you're relationship. But I think that's, that's spot really, on, that's spot on. It's yeah. a strength that the Irish have. We, yeah. we, we're, we don't do much networking through the internet. Mm. We like meeting people. Mm. We like sitting for a cup of coffee, even if it's for five minutes. Yeah. And and I think that's we like interaction, and I think yeah. we were talking about that earlier. You have to have the interaction. Mm-hmm. You can't yeah, be isolated. We're keys, you know, we're, we're you know, when we talk about networking and building relationships, I said look, we were doing that in our twenties, many many moons ago. It was called going to the pub. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I remember knowing so many people because I'd land in say Blackrock or Dunleary, and I'd know my friends were in a pub. This yes. was at 18, 19, and I'd walk around to five or six pubs yeah. trying to find them because we yes. didn't have phones. And then when I was in all those pubs, I'd be bumping into other people, people. and having a laugh. And then when the phone came, it speeded things up so you'd know yes. where they are and you wouldn't go to all these other places. You can't have as many and pints. It, now you've got your phone, you no, can't have as many pints. pints. <laughs> you went meeting as many people yeah, because yeah. you went running around the buzz. And that's, that's what... True what's happened that's and that's why networking groups have come bigger on it yeah, yeah. but I think time. we're misunderstanding a lot of people think networking is just for business people oh it's, it's not. not it's no. for every Everybody. single person at all ages yeah. and yeah. it's not just about getting external results as I said before it's about fulfilling your own direction correct you know justifying substantial so in terms of next steps for both of you um, Sarah what, 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 what are your plans for the next 12 24 months what's the, what's the what does the pathway look like for you um, I'm going to be hiring a lot more staff um, because it's starting to get busier thanks to the Brexit. Um, so I won't complain about the Brexit. Um, but yeah, it's it's more doubling my business in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of building your own skill sets, are you looking to do other things? As I well? am. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm going to... I know uh, you don't... There's <laughs> things you don't want to talk, announce. I am. I am. I'm, I'm going to do a course, um, um, a coaching executive course, uh, just to... To help me build, help my clients type of thing and have a better yeah. understanding. Cool. But to be honest with you, we're always building ourselves. There yeah, isn't a day, yeah, yeah. there isn't exactly. a month that I am doing a training never, course. Never, exactly. never, never stop landing. Yeah. So tell me, what words of wisdom would you give to someone out there in the last couple of minutes we have left? If you want to start a business, don't think about it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. You couldn't get a better country to do a business in, in our, than Ireland, to be quite honest with you. They make it so simple. And where can people find you or if they want to reach out? Give us your details. Um, it's just growforth.com and it's G-R-O-F-O-R-T-H dot com. And, on, and LinkedIn? Uh, Sarah Daly. And there's a Growforth as well on, on LinkedIn as well. And, and can yourself, if people want to reach out and say hello and talk to yourself? Yeah. LinkedIn again. I'm, I'm in the Royal College of Surgeons. You know, you, 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 we're, we're open. We're not a public building, but we are open to the public. Anybody pops in, wants to speak to Ken Gormley, you can get me. I'm on LinkedIn, Ken Gormley. On LinkedIn, the, the, the words of wisdom, Joe, you know, I, I think people need to give themselves a break sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, what I've learned over the years from being maybe what would have, and, and rightly so, would have been a young hothead running around in his teens and not listening to anybody. And then being sat down and said, if you want to succeed, this is how you, how you have to do it. 
the, the words of wisdom that I would try and give if they are is give yourself a break. Don't be afraid to fail. You know, fail fast, recover quicker. And, you know, listen, listen to the great advice. And that, that's really it. There's great advice out there. You know, it's not always criticism. People are giving you good advice. Take it and listen to it. And it'll help you go in the right direction. Yeah, totally it is agree indeed. with you. Yeah, on it. Um, Simon. Yeah, for me, it's do what you're passionate about and, and, and be self-aware enough to know that not to delude yourself and not be direct, distracted because there's so many distractions in the world, but try and figure out what you really want to do, what you love doing, what you're capable of making money from and focus on that as much as you can and try not to be distracted. I, I don't always succeed at that, but yeah. it's there's so much to learn and do in the world. So. To, to it's, simplify, it's exciting. It's to exciting. simplify that one, Simon, maybe what I should have said, Joe, is find the why. Find the why in what you do. It, it's it's interesting, can you say that? Because what I'm really sort of homing in on today or this week is, if you're not sure, ask yourself the questions. Ask yourself a lot of questions and then wait to hear the answers. Okay. And that's, but you have you know, to enjoy would, your job. Yeah. Well, look, it's Stop it's it. it's you know, uh, if, ask yourself those questions. Yeah. Am I enjoying my job? Ask mm -hmm. it, yeah. what is the project? Ask yourself those questions, whatever they are, mm -hmm. and then listen to those answers mm -hmm. yourself. And that's what it is. Good advice. Yes, and uh, on the on the fifteenth of this month as well, I will be normally I'm running a mastermind every six weeks where to help business owners and consultants develop and grow their business. So that's my power ahead. Power Busy ahead. Halloween month ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I do love what I do. I do, and this is my family. Yeah. And I'd like to say thank you to Danny, our engineer inside, who is shouting at us every five minutes, <laughs> uh, and uh, Simon, Sarah, Ken. I'd like to thank you for coming on to Business Eye, thank you. and I'm sure we will meet again. And Simon, my co-host, yeah, thank you very it's much. It's always great to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank you, guys, and uh, have a super, super weekend, everyone, and Come enjoy on, the Ireland. rugby. Enjoy the rugby. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Broadcasting from the Dundrum Town Centre, this 